One of the biggest platforms people use is Upwork. So I'm going to start with Upwork. But I'm not going to cover Upwork alone. I'm going to talk about other places, how to search using other places, other platforms. If I have time, I will cover LinkedIn. But let me just, I'll use Upwork. Now, understand that the foundations are the same thing. So pay attention very well. Foundation, the foundation of search is the same thing. And I'll talk about these things. Then I also showed you multiple different platforms and show you how to search. Now, when we cover how to search, then we move to, then we now move to how to submit proposals. So those are the things we're going to do. So right now, I'm going to, I log into a student's Upwork account. So I hope you can see my, I hope you can see volunteers Upwork account. And you see, I hope you can see my screen and you can hear me, very important. So we can move into search. If you can see my screen, you can hear me, just please let me know so I can read your chat. Mm -hmm. Now we are ready to go into business proper. So I need you to pay attention very, very well. Now, one of the challenges people face as freelancers is that they don't know how to search for jobs. And I'm going to cover that here. There's some of them that even know how to search for jobs, they don't know how to submit proposals. I'm also going to cover that in this session. Those are the, those are the reasons we are here. Now, this is it's not just Upwork alone. I will show you other platforms too, how to search for jobs there. Yeah, so now, this is Upwork. When you log into Upwork, you're going to land on your landing page, your first landing page. Now, the mistake most people make is that, the mistake most people make is that they only use this for Upwork now. Please focus, let's, let's, let's understand for Upwork now. They only use this board to search. I've seen people tell me they only use this feed. They check for most recent jobs. What are the most recent jobs? What are the best matches? Yes, they are good. But that's not the best way to search. Please pay attention. That's not the best way to search. We remember that we're here to search like a pro. I'm going to do this once. If you want me to do this for you again, you pay me. And I charge, I charge premium money. So, but now I'm doing everything here for free. I like to do that. I've, I did one at the beginning of this year. Now, for sessions like this, if I want to do one-on-one, -on -one, I charge $350 per hour. For people who want my per month, I charge $3,005. For people who want me to do it, coach them in a week, I charge $1,005. Now, why am I telling you this? I want you so that you can take this session seriously. That's what I'm, that's why I'm just giving you those, you know, figures you did not ask for. Now, look at this. This is your feed, best match, but they're not, they're not the best way to search. So what's the best way to search? You use your search filters. Now, what do you mean by, what do I mean by search filters? Yeah, you can type in, this is, we are on Upwork right now. Yeah, you can type in any job or any niche you are in. Now, I know there are a lot of virtual assistants. And I know there are a lot of um, writers, so I'm going to use those ones as examples. I can also use other examples. If anybody is interested in any examples, you can drop it in the chat. Now, this is virtual assistance. You type in, look, there are two ways to search. There's keyword and there's categories. That's for those who are on Upwork. There's keyword and there's categories. So let's use keyword. The first search I'm doing right now is keyword. Guys, pay attention. So you are a virtual assistant. You are looking for a job. You use the keyword. So virtual assistant keyword you click on enter now it's going to show you jobs under virtual assistant and any job with the virtual assistant keyword and i want you to pay attention any job that has virtual assistant keyword is what this algorithm now in the upper algorithm, upper algorithm follows instructions like if the instructions you give it is garbage in garbage out that's the way that's how the algorithm works now the moment you use we we'll type in virtual assistant keyword. This is what it's going to show you. Every Now, I want you to pay attention to all the highlights. All the highlights. You will see that. You will see virtual assistant. Even any job that does not have virtual assistant. So far, it has virtual or assistant. Whether it is executive assistant, the keyword will follow. Now, look at this particular word. This is an example. Personal assistant. But remember what I said about, you know, assistant. Because assistant is there, it shows. So now, as an Upwork, if you're an Upwork, if you're searching on Upwork, if you're using a keyword, you type in the keyword. That's the first thing you do. Now, when you type in the keyword, you learn to use the filters. By this, your left hand. I want you to look at this left hand side. You learn to use the filters. And what are the things you can use there? The most important, I see a lot of freelancers use freelan filters that are confusing. They use filters that are, you know, they, they are like words and opposites. Now, don't now, when you're an expert, you will know how to use better filters. 
But if you are a newbie, beginner, or mid level, please don't bother yourself. The only filter you should bother yourself with is this the less than five proposals, the five to 10, and payment verified. Those are the filters you should bother yourself with. Now, that does not mean you can't go for others, but because remember that you are a newbie, you want to increase your chance. So as a new BVA, you do less than five, you do five to 10, you do payment verified. Now see, what is this, this going to do for you? It's going to narrow down the jobs down to the ones that fit in the criteria you put in. So less than five, five to 10 payment verified. And if I were you, some of you, if I were you, you can follow me in these practicals. Maybe you have your PC near you and you are joining with the phone or you have your phone and you are joining with the PC. As I'm doing this thing, you can be doing it, following me as I'm doing it. You can use it to replace your niche and see where possible. Just you know, for some of you, Sharp, you can, because sometimes practical learning is the best form of learning where you are practicing what you are learning. Um, there's audio, there's visual, there's audio visual, then there's practical. Let's, just, let's, not, let's not go into that. Now, when you see this, now another thing is this, another important thing I need to tell you this for those on Upwork. Now, right now we're on Upwork. It's important this job per page, you set it to 50. Now, why? Because if it's on 10, for you to see 50 jobs, you click on next, you click on next, you click on next five times. But it's on, if it's on 50, you just scroll through and by the time you are clicking on the next page, you are going to 50 to 100, 51 to 100. So that's the difference. And also psychologically, when you are clicking on next, 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 you're not seeing anything, your morale will go down. So that's another thing. So remember, I'm telling you how to search like a pro here. And I'm showing you the things I do when I search. I'm going to be showing you. Now, we are still on search on keywords. And there are two ways to search. We are still on number one. I will show you number two. Then also, I will also show you how to submit proposals and the strategies. I'll show you. Now, here, yeah, you now see the jobs you are interested in. We are using Upwork now to look for remote jobs and freelance jobs. You see the jobs now. What, what, what do I do here yeah, now? There's something I do that I've taught my students here yeah, that something that has worked for me it can work for you too. Now, I like to save jobs so that I do, because now you want to narrow down 2,000 jobs to 50 or 10 or 5. So when you are searching for jobs, the first thing you are going to be seeing, you are going to be seeing job cards. And when you see job cards, then you can, you know, maybe you see any jobs that you're interested in, you save. Now, from looking at these jobs, from looking at this job card, because I'm more experienced than you, I know how to do it. But from looking at these job cards, from looking at these job cards, um, you can know which is which. Like you can you can know what to save and what to not save. Like if you want to. Now, this does not mean you must not do anything apart from it. But but you must be able to like you must be able to follow, like follow like what and what do I mean by that? Now, looking at this job card now, I can see payment verify. I can see zero. And I don't want, I don't want, I'm not looking for a client that I've not spent. Like, as a newbie or as a mid I'm looking for people that have spent money. Because that they've spent money means they are going to spend. And this does not mean you're not going to meet clients who would, you, you will be the first freelancer they will spend for. It happens. But I like to, you know, work on. So this is virtual assistant. So now look at this payment verify because of the filter you used, the ratings, you check it, you like, you can already see it from here, the amount they've spent. But when I look at this tie to fast speaker, I'm not a fast speaker. So I'm, I'm looking at the next one. But looking at an executive who knows how to handle social media now, this looks like something like me because so I can save it. So I, I scroll down again. This one says quick and easy, easy task. The problem with when, when a, a task is quick and easy is that a lot of people want quick and easy and they are ready to, it's mostly pin, peanuts. Now, if you, without, without seeing, you can see, I'll leave a glowing five star review. It means, they are ready to, they, they will only, okay, the task is quick and easy, taking only 10 minutes of your time. Okay, if it is worth it, you can, it's something you can do. The five-star reviews is going to be valuable. Um, executive assistant, project manager, see, 200K spent. And even though this is less than 4. Point, this is 4.63, okay, but the hourly rate is still, okay. Now, just following what I do, if I'm searching, real estate code caller, I'm not, I'm not the real estate, virtual property manager, English, Spanish, bilingual. I don't know how to speak Spanish. Um, virtual assistant, real estate listing creator. Maybe I know how to do this. I see. Now, to not to cut because of the, we have a lot of things to cover. Remember that when you save jobs out of 2000 something, you see some jobs, you save them. Now, that way you can now come down here to focus on the jobs you saved. 
So that way you separated those four from the 2000, from the noise. Now you can now focus down on this. Now, before we focus down on this, there's something else I want to show you. I want mistake people used to make. There's something else I need to show you before we we'll go down into focusing on it. Now, always remember that it's not just first page. Check up until page two, page three. I'm just running through this fast. There's page two, there's page three. Check them. And up until you see two days ago, when you still see one day ago, one day ago still means yesterday. So this one says one day ago, it's still yesterday. Now, two days ago, you can ignore. Now, the reason I'm telling you to ignore these two days ago is that you're not an expert yet. When, I'm, when you're an expert, I can teach you how to navigate these two days ago, but ignore that. Focus on, you know, as you grow, then you learn more. It's not what they taught you in SS3, it's they taught you in JS1. So please, just focus on, when you get to one day ago, that means you can, you know, you can ignore. Now, now let's go to the saved job, the job you saved. Now, when you go to the job that you saved, then you can now go down into what we call the client, checking the client details, checking the job activity. Now, I'm going to show you, this is practical, I'm going to show you. Now, when you see a particular job, the first thing you need to do, guys, is always check the client details. The mistake, another mistake freelancers make is that when they are here, they go to check the job immediately. They read, 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 read. Ah, this is something I can do. No, you don't do that. Always check, because the clients and the activity of that job is more is even as important or sometimes more than the job description itself. So you first go, like, I'm not always moved by this or check, because another mistake you make is this. Maybe you, you know, you read this job description. Some job descriptions can be long. You take your time, you read and read and read and read and read. Then before you know it, you now realize that, see, they need someone from Panama. You now say, oh, it's not for me. By the time you do it two times, three times, you will down your morale. So the first thing you do is always check these client details. So this is a good client, at least to an extent. They have a good IR rate. They've spent some money. They pay well, good to an extent. Then you can now read what other people have said about the clients. You can read them, you know, to also get the name. See, Alexander. Amazing to work with. It was a pleasure to work with Alexander. This to freelancer means to the person. But the one above is the one the freelancer gave the client. So don't just mistake them. So this Alexander, see if you see again, it was a good experience working with Alexander. So they mentioned the name twice. So that's the name of the client. Now, after checking those, then you can move into the activity, as I said. Now, checking this activity now, you remember they are now looking, of which we didn't see that at the saving the job. So you are looking for Spanish, you are looking for someone in Venezuela, and you don't meet up. Imagine if you've read all the job description, you've answered all the questions, and like you are very happy, and you now scroll down to check the job activity your morale will be down. That's why I like to tell people, start, I tell my students, start from the job activity, client details first, then check the job activity before you read the job description. That's how to search, and that's how to search where. Now, because this one does not meet your criteria now, you just ignore. You check the next one you save. You know, remember that you, from 2003, you save to four. Like, sometimes when you are doing this from 2000, you can save like 20. So now from that 20, you can eliminate and get your best two, best three. Remember the rule again, you check the client details here first, then you go into the activity. Now look, this is a good activity, but it's only for people who are from the US. So if you are not from the US, you don't qualify for this one. So, but that's the same rule you do. You check the job activity, then before you know it, you check the, you know, then you can go. Now look at this one, the ones that we said is quick and easy. As I've said, the things about quick and easy tax is that a lot of people will apply for it, you know? But see, they've even already hired someone. So imagine you don't, you didn't see this now. You didn't check the activity. See why I say you should always pay attention to job activity. Remember that you check the client details first, then you check the job activity before you check the job. Very, very important. So these are the things you always do before you, you know, in the search phase, you know, seeking an executive assistant, you know, remember to check and check. So look at this now. This is, this client has spent a lot. This client has 100% higher rate. Like for any job, every job they post, but also this is a featured job. So this job is advertised. They paid more. See, see, can you see? This client paid to post to reach more freelancers. That's what featured job means. So just then you check the job activity. Client is interviewing one person, five to 10 people. So if there's something you can do. And this particular, this thing is only for paid, paid uh, freelancers. If you are, if you are using the paid Upwork paid plan, that's when you can see this. If you are not, you can't see it. So it's because this particular account is on Upwork paid plan. That's why you can see this. So don't, don't be, don't, don't make it confuse you. 
But remember the rules, just follow the rules and everything I've said about search and everything. So well, we'll go to, we'll go into submitting proposals, but let's I just wanted to show you the first part of search. Now, the second part of search is this clear filters. Another way to search. Now, let me look for categories that people mentioned. I believe some people should have mentioned some categories they're interested in. Oh, someone said data analytics. Okay, let's go for data analytics to do. So another way to search is using categories. And pay attention now. Pay attention very well using categories. Now, how do you use categories? Go to your, see, under this filter by, you would see categories. Now, you go to categories, you click on categories, then you scroll down. But let's first do that did virtual assistant first, because since we already did the virtual assistant for keyword, let's see what it looks like for, for categories, then we'll do that analysis for, for to lose request. Now, let's see, so for, for, um, for virtual assistant is under admin support, so you can see virtual assistant. So when you click virtual assistant, it's going to show you all the jobs under this category virtual assistant. So you can see 10,000 jobs. Then you can do this remaining, the, the less than five, the less than five, five to 10 payment verified. So that's it. So you do less than five, you do five to 10, you do payment verified. Then you know, see. Now, the idea is this, so why am I, why did I show you categories and why did I show you keyword? And this is very important, guys. There are some jobs that will fall under keywords that won't fall under categories. And there are some jobs that will fall under categories that won't fall under keyword. That's why I recommend you use both search. I tell my students, and I'm also telling you, even if you're not my student, you might be my student in the future. Now, another important thing about search is this. You don't need to search and search and search and search and keep on searching. You just need to search once. Get your filters. Get your, you know, understand all the filters. And you can save that search. So you click on this save search. Let's just name let's name it VA category. That's the name of our save search. Then you save it. Now, when next you come to the platform, you don't need to search again. You just go to your save search and you start searching for jobs from there. So all you need to do is search once and you can use that filter for one year, for two years. So that's like when you get the right, then you can be tweaking them maybe in the future, depending on how maybe it's not it stopped working or you want to test out a larger now let me explain what i mean now remember that virtual assistant is under admin support if you want to test out maybe the whole admin support generally instead of just virtual assistant so sometimes you can say maybe play around the major categories instead of the subcategories so that's what i mean by you know check even though you are checking the your categories which is the virtual assistant you will see the jobs now 2000 plus you can also check the main categories the main umbrella of the categories because why am i showing you this because sometimes even if it is a VA job, it will fall into another part in the category. Like this, the algorithm can be confusing sometimes. It's not your fault, or it's not our fault. It's the algorithm. So like, that's how to do it. You can play around the major category. You can play around the subcategories. Now let's check for, for data analysis. If you want to go to data analysis, you scroll down. Um, the whole categories are alphabetical. So it starts from accounting, goes to admin support, customer service, data analysis, design for graphic designer, web designers engineering, architecture, then it goes to IT networking for tech support people, DevOps, it goes to legal for lawyers, it goes to sales and marketing for digital marketing people, translation, then web development, web mobile and software development, then you have writing. Those are the whole categories. I just listed them out for you. Now, but for data analytics, you know, it's under data, data science and analytics. So remember what I said, you can do all data science and analytics. Now you can merge, you can merge categories together. Said, uh, um, so let's say I'm an admin support person, I'm a VA, and I also have data science skills. I can match the two. It's going to show me jobs in admin support and jobs in data science. But let's stick to job data science because we're ready. So the thing about this filter is, as I said, it follows the instruction you give it. So remember, as I just removed admin support, can you see the number of jobs reduced? So now you're going to get jobs in data science and data analytics. So that's what you're going to do. So that's how it is. So then that's how to search using keyword. We've covered how to search using keyword. We covered how to search using categories now. And that's how to say. So let's go into proposal submission. Now let's go into proposal submission as a star because we also need to talk about other platforms too. Now, when you see a job that you can do, when you search for a job and you see a job that you can do, I don't know. When you search for jobs that you see the ones you can do. So remember the rules. Check client details first. Check, uh, check what they said, and check the activity. They've hired two people, 
So unless they say they want to hire multiple people, that's that's when you should apply. But for this one now, if I have two people already, so most likely if you are submitting a proposal for this one, you are just wasting your connect. And connect are what, for those who don't know what connect means, connect are what you use to apply for job. I'm going to show you, how, I'm going to talk about it more in the, in the proposal, in the, um, so this is what, these are what connects, are. you know, send proposals for connect. But I'll talk about it more in the, when we start applying, when you start submitting proposals. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we've covered search. Let's move into proposal submission. Then we'll move into other platforms. Now, now the the art of proposal writing, uh, guys, is that if you know how to if you know how to submit proposals then you increase your chance of getting jobs. Like there's an art to proposal writing. It's not just, you don't just need to apply for, like, you don't just need to just submit proposal for the sake of proposal submission. You need to understand that there's an act. Like look at this anatomy for a, for a great proposal now. It says your attention grabbing first sentence, build interest, write about the benefits, showcase your skill, focus on the client, add proof of samples, add call to action. That's what this person said on their own anatomy. You know, and it's similar to mine too. I had Sam who wrote a proposal, who got a job with this, and I dissected this proposal. Now, what are the things I included in this, in this dissection? I said, intro, you know, use your intro to talk about yourself and also ensure that you use your hook. Like your intro, if you, I showed you Alexandra how to get their, a client's name, then the point is just ensure that your first paragraphs or your first two paragraphs are hooking the clients. Like, before you talk about your skills, if you look at this, I introduced my, myself in number three, or that was even what Sam did. Sam introduced himself in number three. Why, why you? Now, your hook, because still, eh, clients thinking me, 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 they want, they are selfish and it's not their fault. They have the money. You remember, you want to collect their money. They are selfish. So everything should be about the clients, not about you first. So you should talk about the client first or the client's need, the client's pain points. That's if you see number two, address the client pain points before you now talk about you, which is in three. Then you can talk about how you plan to go about it, um, why you, like as I said, why you, and you can close and you can attach samples and portfolios. That's how to go about it. Now, I had people who copied and pasted these proposals, like these templates. I, can, I want you to, you can just you know, run through it in my, you know, because of the sake of time. I came across your post, best bet, onboard me. You can read it. You will see that it's the same thing on both places. Onboard me, onboard me. As an experienced, as a, I just came across, I just came across best bet. I'm confident I am. She just tweaked this here. Jennifer used this to get a $1,500 job. Roland used this to get a job on LinkedIn. Sent it as a code email and he got the job on LinkedIn. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that if you follow templates and you tweak them, no, don't just copy. The problem with templates is that people will take templates and they'll copy and paste it. Don't just do that. Always, you know, tweak templates to the client interest and the client needs. So that's that's what you need to do before you can you can uh, that's what you need to do before you can use proposal. So now let's go back to our practicals. Let's go back to our practicals. I said this is ninety percent practicals, ten percent. Theory. Let's try to apply for a job. Let's try to submit the proposals. Um, let's just see if we can see a job. You know, for the sake of time, let's just run through it and see how we can quickly. But you just, you know, not necessarily submit, but just so that I will show you, so that you'll have some of the templates, so that when you are, you know, applying or submitting your own job. Okay, this is a very good one. This is a very, this is a good one. Now look at this. Remember the rule: always check the client first. Now. Some clients, sometimes people are prejudiced about some places now, and it's not their fault. Maybe they've had experiences now. That this client is a Philippine client does not mean they've not spent 50K. So don't just use, because they are from Philippines, India, Bangladesh, and say, no, you don't want to apply for jobs. Now, yes, bring up your defense when you see them, but just do your due diligence. Your due diligence is going to work for you more than just having some bias in your head. 
Now, I have, you might have experiences that are legit, yes, but also just ensure that you are not emotional. This is a business and you need to treat it as a business. So look at this, check these clients. You know, they've paid a lot of people. They've posted job four and 12 times. They've hired more than 200 people. So that means, uh -huh, this is what it's and you can check your know, feedback. You know, the client doesn't really give feed feelings about You can see they measure the client's name here. Awesome client, Ashrant. He has diverse skills, you know. See, see the no, no, fantastic uh, feedback they made to the clients here. So now if you want more, you can always view more feedbacks. Um, I just have an amazing time working with. Let me tell you. So can you see? Can you see what this person is saying? This person really is explain. He's not only thoughtful and kind. He's also incredibly appreciative of our hard work. Can you see? Now, you, you now the idea is this. Why do you read these things? It's so you understand the kind of clients you are working with before working with them. So yeah. Now, then and then you can read the job description. Now, the job description says AI, AI strategy consultant for an agrochemical industry. Then you read what the job description is, responsibilities, requirements. Now, um, then this job says it will take you eight connect. So now let's click on apply now. Let's click on, let's run as if no, you are applying for it. So we are submitting proposal. Let's just run in case studies on that. On Upwork, you can have, you have up to three profiles. So you can use the one that, you know, links to the particular job. Then you see the job details here. I tell my student, I like to put my job details near me. Now look at the hourly range. The hourly range says between 15 and 25. This client has a budget for the hourly range. So you pay attention to that. Now so that, look at the terms. So this, pro, my profile, uh, the profile I'm using, the profile I'm using says $25 per hour while this client budget is 15 to 25. So no problem, you can always use the upper limit since client is willing to pay for it. Pricing is psychological. That's not why we're here, but it's just that most time people don't know that pricing is psychological. So yeah, you can use the upper limit. Now, I always understand that when you get, um, when you get, oh, this is Indofil. Indofil is, is it not Indomie? But those who know this is Dofil. Now, so how would you approach developing an AI strategy? So now these questions are, as you answer your cover letter, Always also answer questions like this when they ask. Now, but let's just, let me just quickly run through, like, you know, it's going to be basic, but let me just run through this. Now, when you're submitting a proposal, you know, remember what I said? I said, I like to use, I like to put the job side by side with me when I'm submitting a proposal. Now, look at this. Let me do this. Let me just do this for your sake. Look at this. They say, hello, we are seeking an experienced AI strategy consultant. So they say they are seeking an experienced AI strategy to help us develop and implement an AI with a leading agrochemical company in the Philippines. Successful candidate will have a strong background in AI with experience in agrochemical. So now this is this. Um, a Ashrafi, the name of the clients. I'm the... I'm the... Okay. Let me see. Before I talk about it, let me see. I'm the best person. So I'll see what I did. I'm using the award implement AI strategy for for interview. Okay, let me see. Oh, let me see. The best person. You know, the thing is, the hook is just very important. Very to help implement an AI strategy for industry. Why? Why? Because. Because I'm an experienced AI strategy short consultant with a strong background here in um, yeah, the business strategy. I also have maybe biochemical. I also have maybe you didn't have agrochemical, but you have biochemical. 
um, expertise dealing with biochemical companies as that was something I did for my my bachelor's. I'm just using fantasy here for my bachelor's. Now, sometimes your, your Grammarly can help you in the sense that I, and I use Grammarly, but I only use it after I finish writing my proposals. I use it after I finish writing my proposals. So Grammarly will help me in case, because when I'm typing and I type fast, I ignore grammar, I ignore everything. So, but, hey, but let's go back to this. Um, now, remember what I said, that the first thing is your hook, before you now talk about, now your hook can come in anywhere. It can be I'm the best person to help you, to help, uh, Remember their name, the company name, the endofill. So I'm the best person to help endofill implement an AI strategy. Okay, I already said it here. Let me just use it like this. Um, why? Because I have, because I'm an experienced, yeah, this thing can change. So let's just still continue. So these are some of your responsibilities. Working with stakeholders, developing an AI strategy, um, identify opportunities, and these are the requirements. Proving so now the point is this. Point is this. I see the amount of time they repeat this. That proving experience as an AI strategy consultant, strong knowledge of AI, this thing, strong analytical, you know, degree in computer science, data science, business, or related. So now you can talk about like just to ensure that the, the idea behind submitting proposals is that. Always read every requirement, every client questions, and you answer them. So identify opportunities to use AI to improve various, including predictive analytics for crop protection, diseases, work with stakeholders across organization, develop an AI as a union. I did, I used to have templates, but because of this session, I just want to just do it from ground up. I want to just run it from ground up. I used to have templates I use for this. And when you have a template that is working for you, just Work on that template, and if it stops working for you, develop another template. And um, just you know, um, yeah, I like to do this copy and paste some of their questions so that I can twist it to my own sometimes, but other times I just use my template and ensure. So now, what I do is this I used to use sticky notes. So, sticky notes, the job will just be you know, you know sticky notes can be over your screen and the job description, the sticky, my sticky notes will just be at my left hand side, and I'll just be typing the proposals on my right hand side. And so that way I'm looking at the job, I'm submitting, I'm typing the proposal, I'm looking at the job. Or I might type even it on my notepad on my phone. I can type the proposals on my notepad on my phone. And I'm looking at the job, I'm typing it, I'm typing it. Then when I finish, I just copy and paste it on my PC. You know, anyone that works for you, really, just but for the point is just ensure that you have the job description side by side with you as you are, you know, submitting your proposals. So yeah, let me see. So look at this now, look at the hook. The best person to help in the field, implement an AI strategy. Why? Because now this hook can still be worked on, can still be better. Now in the sense that you can still find a way to input all the requirements into this hook because I just used that first line first. But you can still find a way to put the requirements here into this hook or the responsibilities. Now, but the point is this, the requirement, the responsibilities, ensure that you answer them. You know, so and remember that I said intro, hook, then why you. So ensure that you answer them now I'm not for the sake of this time, because if I want to do this, it's gonna take me like 30 minutes because this is a detailed, so I just want to just rush and run through. But you guys would understand the points, like you will get the points. Maybe I'll just drop another paragraph and just you know, you can you can always make it better. You can always make it better. So some of the maybe uh, let me see. With over seven, five years, okay, let me see. With over eight years of experience as a data analyst and two years experience Remember, I see, I see that I started talking about why me inside the second paragraph. Sometimes 
hook can be first two paragraphs. Sometimes it can just be first paragraph and yeah. You have experience, you have yes, experience in AI. I believe right person will develop an AI strategy that aligns with Indofi's business objective and market opportunities. See what I did there. So it can be later I can help Grammarly. Grammarly can be helping you to, to edit. So it's now you can now move into now the idea is see what I just did again now. I just turn their words into another paragraph. Then now you can move into you can move into these responsibilities, talk about it, move into the requirement, talk about it. Your proposal does not have to be long. And ensure that you had all the whole necessary things you need to add the um your experience, your expertise. Then you can add some samples, portfolios, or why they're just the right person for the job. Really, that's it. And that's that. Sound. I'm going to. I'm, I will send you some templates to you. Some proposal templates. I'll send it to you. For those who are registered for this, you get the proposal template. I have some free proposal templates, so you can use them. You can build on them. There are fifteen of them. No, you get it's not than fifteen now. Well, 15 of them. I mean, I'd like to run that promise and over deliver 15. Yeah. If I'm in a good mood, I can turn it to 20. But 15 of them, you're getting 15 of them. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, but you get the templates, you can build on them. So, that's how to submit proposals. I like, if I do this, I'm going to do like 30 minutes, but I don't. We still have other things we need to cover. So, yeah. That's how to submit proposal, really. Just check the chat clients and um, description. Check what they are saying, check what they are looking for, and ensure that your proposal is answering that. Now, this question, for example, how would you approach an AI strategy for a company? Now, so that's this is already like a pre-interview. And you are gonna this is, you talk well with your strategy, with how you, you know, just you know, sometimes you can have answered the question here, then you copy and paste and you just maybe fleshing it up better. Then you add your samples, you upload it and attach it now. Sometimes people used to boost proposal. Please don't stress yourself with boosted proposal. If you have more connect, you can boost your proposal. Or if it is a job that you know that you are really, really the best person for it, then boost your proposal. But other than that, you can just send for the normal basics. And uh, if your proposal is good enough, you're going to get a client to hire you for the job. So yeah, so that's how to search for jobs. I got to submit proposals. Uh, I just say, let me cover those two first. Um, if we have time, or if it's q and I can come back to it. Um, yeah. But let's move to let's move to other platforms. Let's move to other platforms. Yes, um, the, if I if I by Q and A, maybe on Q and A, if I still need to come back to the proposal, I need to complete it. So I'll come back. We still I need to ensure that I complete this first before we. Yep. So I uh, let me see. So let's move to other platforms. Yeah. Now, so it's not just Upwork. Now, if you are searching for jobs on, let's say, let's go to we work remotely for example. Let's go to work remotely, for example. Work remotely is a work remotely is a is a remote jobs platforms, and it's an example of a remote jobs platform. So the remote job is a job board platform for remote jobs, and there are different job board platforms. There's work remotely. There's flex jobs. There's flex jobs. Um. There's um. There's flex jobs. There's um. There's indeed. No, indeed, it's just you know it's big. Indeed, it's like LinkedIn. There's even LinkedIn. I'm gonna if I have time, I'll show you LinkedIn. So now look at this. We work remotely. There are always job boards on remote work remotely. Now, when you're on job boards, and please, this is very important. When you are using job boards, and this rule applies to all job boards, always check this full time USA only. So that means this is location specific. If you are not in USA, it means they don't want you. I've seen people that have applied for location jobs that are not in their location and they got it, but they are not the rule, they are the exception. So this one says full-time Latin America, Europe only. Um, this one says full-time. Now, when you see full-time anywhere in the world, for those in Africa, for those in Nigeria, then you can apply for jobs like this. Then you also see the dates the job was posted, June 2. That's a long time ago. You know, so always check, check out those things first before you apply. So you can see these ones, you know. Full time anywhere in the world, June 26. Full time USA only. Mm -hmm. So, is it is a top 100 company? Top 100 remote company. That's why you see top 100 here, according to the platform. 
top 100 remote countries. So anywhere in the world means you can apply. USA only means it's for USA people. So this is the rule of this is the rule of job boards. When you are using job board, let me show you another job board. Motive. There are a lot of them. So the ones I can cover today, I'll cover it. The ones you see that is the same. The rule of job board. They can have different UI, but the rule is the same. They can have a different user interface. That's what UI means. Now this particular one will even show you the the pay. 130k thousand dollars to 185 thousand dollars, ten dollar per hour to 31 dollars per hour. But this is a worldwide job. So for software people, 145 thousand. So you can see. So then you can check now. It's not just for tech people. So you can see there's design, there's marketing, there's customer service. So let's click for customer service. So let's look for customer support jobs. So you can see. Remember I said check the time the job was posted. So this is worldwide. Two, but it was two weeks ago. So administrative assistant, they are ready to pay $29 per hour or $15 to $29 per hour. And that is worldwide. So always remember that I said, remember the rule I said, Asia only, USA only. These are locations. So then when you see the job, so now when you see the job, the first thing you do is you click on it. Now, when you click on it, the most important thing you need to do is you need to read, you need to read the job description. Now, the thing is about the thing about this this um, remote jobs is that first of all you would apply for a lot of remote jobs. The numbers given remote job is more than freelancing, and like you would and for remote jobs you need to prepare your CV. Now there are different platforms to create free pre CV. Even Canva, uh, if there's time I can show you, Canva, Microsoft Word, Google Doc. Like I'm showing you the easiest things. They are free. Canva I should be able to show you. Canva, Microsoft, let me see if I can show you Microsoft Word. Ah, I'll try. Canva, Microsoft Word, Google Doc. I'll see. I should be able to show you Google Doc now. Ah, if I can even show you Microsoft Word. Google Doc. Let me show you. I should, I should be able to show you Google Doc. Ah, no, I should be able to show you. You can create CV templates. Let's see. Go to Docs. You can create CV templates with it. Okay, yeah, it's already locked. So you can see, can you see? Can you see? Resume, resume, can you see? So you can create, you can see template gallery, you can see different galleries. So for resume, you can see like how many? One, two, three, four, five. So you can, you can pick any of them. They are free. So you can be templates. You can click on them. Canva has its own. This is for Google Doc. Microsoft will have their own. So let's even click on this one. Let's go on this one. So I'm showing for if you want to apply for remote jobs now, understand that you need resumes. So can you see? So you can prepare your resume with nice design like this. All you need to do is to just edit, edit the things there. And you can also Google, you know, top in, in case you're in any niche. You can talk Google sample top resume for for a data analysis. That is not even talking about ChatGPT. We've never entered ChatGPT. We might talk about ChatGPT later. For a data analyst. Because you can type in, you can type in, you can use some prompt to type in some stuff into that. So look at this now. So system data analysis resume examples. So if you can click on, this is just Google free. You can click on the sites. Can you see? See, this is a sample free. Like look at it. So you can maybe download it if it's downloadable, but look at it, the work experience, some of the things they put there, the skills, education. So you can check other samples. I know that they would have other samples. Diego Perez, can you see? These are other samples, work experience, can you see? We just use Google now, now. I don't know this site before, but can you see? So what am I trying to say? So you can have that, this idea, you can download it, screenshot it, find it with them, use it as a guide for your own self. This is that the guide, you know, type in your name. Let's say my name is Tunde Bala Blue. Can you see? Industrial designer, I can change it to data analyst. Data analyst. Can you see? Then you enter your details. Can you see? You enter your email. Can you see? Your, you can enter your email. Um, Bala Blue Bulaba at gmail.com. Can you see? 
your phone number, your details, your skills, your experience. Can you see your experience? So this is a this are, I'm just showing you so that you know that it's not as it's not just you don't need you really don't need that much. Like this is Google Doc. If you go to Microsoft Word too, you want to click on file, open it will give you templates, CV templates. If you go to Canva too, you get a lot of free CV templates. That's that's different from the some apps that are free. So remember that we're talking about um, remote jobs because you will need to submit CVs. That's why I showed you how to create free CVs. Like all these things are free. Like you can go to Google, they are free. Nobody should like, but if you need an expert too, you should be able to pay for their service because they spent years learning how to create job winning CVs. So, but if you don't have money for an expert, starting, you can, if you don't have money, have time. And if you have time, do those things yourself. Use Google, use YouTube, use CV templates. There are a lot of CV templates. I just use Google Doc. I use Microsoft Word. Like I just use those ones because they are the easiest for you. Google Doc, Microsoft Word, and Canva. Like they have a lot of templates there for resume. And you can just input, input your details like we just did here. Tunde Bala Blue, Data Analyst, your details, your streets, your skills. Like then I also showed you if you, in case you don't even know how to design. Like even though, because even this one, I've given you detailed skills now. But you, you still don't know how to let's remove this zoom. I don't know why this zoom is showing me. I have heard people see my screen. So, like you can see now. So, experience, education. Now, this format is different, but you can learn from something like this. And there are even templates like this too on, on Canva. There are templates you can see. You can see. Use this template or download as a PDF. I don't know if they will ask you to sign up on their platform. You know, some of them you can download. Some of them will start asking you to use the template. Let's even try it. They can start telling you to don't worry, sign in, get started. So use templates. So they tell you you can use their templates. This is just Google. Though. And you see, I don't even know this site before. Import your LinkedIn profile. I don't know this site before. Ah. Okay. So I believe you've seen it. If you so you create your resume, then you can submit your resumes here. Like you read the job description and they will tell you how to apply. You click on apply for the position. So that's the same thing, like your location and everything. So I just showed you that Indeed is one of the top platforms too. Like you can go to Indeed, you can check a lot. Indeed has a lot of jobs. So let's, let's, let me see. No, I don't want to sign in. Let's see who are the people here. Who again should we, who should we talk about? Who, who, which niche should I? Which niche should I talk about? Like, which, let's use another niche for, for Indeed. UI UX. Okay, thank you. Um, Taiwo, let's use UI UX. So now let's look for UI UX jobs on Indeed. So UI UX, UI UX designer. Now, the thing is about Indeed is, you know, I've showed you, I've showed you the motives to work remotely. There are a whole lot of them, but those ones are job boards. Now, you check, always check, see, see where city, state, zip code, or remote. So you click on remote because you want remote jobs, basically, right? Then you check UI UX designer, UI designer, but let's even use UI designer. Then you click on search. So now it's going to show you the jobs that fit in those portfolios. Now, remember that because we didn't sign in, when you sign in, you get a better, you get a better, you know, detailed, you know, form better than this. So you see, I think they are even rating those companies. So you can sort by relevance. You can sort by date. See 821 jobs. And remember what I said about remote jobs. You will apply plenty. I've seen people that have applied for 400 jobs, 300 jobs. But when they get that, yes, they are getting 200000 $300,000 per year. So trust me, the thing about remote jobs is that, especially when you're using all these job boards, you would apply well. But one yes can change your generation. Because imagine you are earning $300,000 per year. You can multiply that in there and do the math. But the, the behind the scene is that you would apply plenty. You can get like 50, 100, no. But one yes. I don't know, my friend was applying every day, every day, every day. But the one yes that he got, the job came with free relocation to Canada with him and his family. Free. And they paid for everything, all expense. Before he relocated, while he was still applying for his visa, they sent him MacBook, sent him everything he needed to be working. It was a tech bro. So guys, you you were bought before you, how did he get that job? It wasn't easy. He was applying every day, every day, every day. Now, you remember what I said about job cards? These are job cards too. Remote, remote, remote. 
So you can click on them, you see the details on this right, right hand side. Now, even um, Angel List is also, we can also go through Angel List. Angel List is called well around now. But it's also a platform for, and I, I had a lot of students who have gotten jobs from Angel List, like five, 10 of them that I know of. Some of the ones that came to do testimonials to me, others don't come back and I'm happy, I've had their life. So, but the rule is this just read everything, read everything. You know, they say mobile, like read everything remote. But see what they say, you must create an Indeed account. But I don't want to log in. I just want to show you. I don't want to log into my account. So you don't log, I don't want to waste our time. We still have other things we need to do. Product design, like see, this was posted 29 days ago. Like you check the time it was posted, if the job is still valid. Posted, so I sort it by relevant, but we can sort it by dates. That's how to use, learn how to use these filters. When you sort by date, for example, see, this one, this, they say this job was just posted. This job was posted today. So you can sort by recency when you're applying, you know, senior product designer today, indeed. And this is just indeed. Then we have Zip Recruiter. Um, there's Zip Recruiter. I've showed you to work remotely. I've showed you, I've showed you to work remotely. I've showed you remotive. I've showed you flex job. It's the same thing, the same rule. But this flex job is a paid, is a paid platform. So you might not start with it. Even when you make money, you can start paying them. Pegler is a paid platform. I pay, I pay to use their platform because I just you know, play around their platform. But you don't need to start with them. Let's not go into the ones that are asking you for money. Start with the ones that are free. So we work remotely is free. Indeed is free. Remotive is free. There's Remote OK. There's um, Zip Recruiter. All these things I mentioned. I have students who have made money for who has gotten jobs from every platform I mentioned. Remote OK has a lot of... Um, as a matter of tech jobs nowadays, but you can see the follow the rules is still the same. So remember, always check worldwide means worldwide. Check the time the job was posted. Click on it, read on it. There's a lot of tech jobs on remote okay nowadays. They've they've pivoted into tech jobs, but you can still see some finance job. So, but if you are a tech person, you should try remote okay. Remote okay's job is not that much as it used to be. Then there is this zip recruiter. I, had, I remember a student, I was in one of my cousin's wedding when he called me that he got a job on this platform. I was so happy for him. So, I was so happy for him. So, yeah, over 1 million jobs, you know, jobs in the US. And so, you can see, got a platform. I can't, I can't forget. One of my students got a job on this place. I follow the same rule that I showed you. Learn how to use the filters. Learn how to just click on remote only jobs. Let's even try to look for jobs. Uh, location remote. Remember what I said about remote. Keyword. Let's look up. Anybody say anything in the comments? Uh, let's see. Project management. Okay. Cyber security. So project management. So you can see project manager. Search remote. You can see 1,000, 11,662 project remote project manager jobs. And you see it. First time, London, UK, UK, UK. Why is it showing me UK jobs? Let's see. Why is it showing me UK jobs? Remote project manager jobs are showing me UK jobs. Ah, maybe, I don't know. It's showing me a lot of UK jobs. Maybe I'll just suggest this one for my UK people. Yeah, I'll not have the time to just check it out. But you can log in and you can tweak, tweak um, remote, let me see, remote USA. No, not just without, sorry. I don't like it. It's showing me UK jobs. I think this... Oh, zebucreta.co.uk. Uh -huh. Ah, what are they showing me UK jobs? At the websites. Aha, uh -huh. I went to the UK part. But there's also the normal general. Ah. A lot of... But you guys, can you see? Can you all see? This is how to search for jobs like a pro. That's how to submit proposals. Um, for you submitting, I, I showed you CVs. You can create CVs, create your resume. For cover letters, cover letters can you can use cover letters the same way you do proposal writing, um, in the sense that you talk about why 
they are the best person for the role, you know, reading the job description. Because remember that even this place too, they will have job description. Um, you know, they have job descriptions here. Then you use them, use all the job descriptions. You know, you can see for this administrative assistant role now, they ask for responsibilities, requirements. Now remember that how I just showed you that sample in that data stuff. You use the responsibilities and the requirements, input it in your cover letter, then your your resume or your CV will now be, you know, to back it up now. But don't, one, one of the things is when you apply for remote roles and you have multiple skills, you can't create one resume. It's not one resume fix all, uh, fits all. Create different resumes. Let's say you have 10 skills, create 10 different resumes. Each resume focusing on your skill, you're focusing on that core skill so that you can use each resume to apply for the role that you. So let's say I'm a customer service. I also, I'm also a VA. I also have digital marketing skills. So that means I can create three resumes, one for my customer service, one for my VA, one for my digital marketing. And if the job is, this particular one says administrative assistant, then I can use my VA CV resume to apply for it. But the rule of um, re uh, remote job is that it's a numbers game and you would apply tire. But there are plenty of platforms. You might just apply maybe 20, 30 before you see. Like, but when you get yes, uh, the yes on remote jobs used to, used to be mad. So one of the things you can be doing, you can be applying for freelancing jobs. You can be applying for freelancing jobs by the side. You're applying for freelancing jobs by the side. But the moment, the moment you just have the time, you can do, let's see if I can do LinkedIn for you guys. I hope I can log into my LinkedIn account. Oh, telling me to sign in. Yeah, let's see. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if I can still do it. So yes, um, that is this. I hope you guys learned a lot from the session. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot from the search, from the proposal submission. Um, that's that's um how to apply for jobs. Um, how to submit proposals. Yep. Yeah.